Morning, guys. Uh, can everyone hear me in the back? Okay. Uh, so my name is Magna Logan. I'm gonna be your host for the rest of the day. Just introducing the speakers here. Uh, it's an honor to be here and, and, and be volunteering and helping this uh, village. Um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Yang Yang Wang. Uh, she's a cloud security architect, uh, leading implementation of security tasks at High Trust. Uh, she has led integration security into various CI CD pipelines uh, and created successful security programs and culture. And she's going to be talking about automate pen testing in Dockerized CI CD environments. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for coming. And I hope you're happy by the end of the presentation. So today's topic is about um, automation uh, in aut automating dynamic application security testing in CI CD pipelines. So before I start, how many people are actually f very familiar with the CI CD pipelines? The, okay. How many people here are security professionals? <laughs> okay, I see some overlapping here. All right, that's good. So before I start, um, I wanted to um, to say that I'm here on my personal capacity, and what I say, what I expressed in this presentation, does not represent my organization. So the outline of the presentation is that well, you know, in the me and I age, I have to introduce myself, obviously. And then uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the CI CD pipelines because I know some people probably are not, um, I mean, probably know something or not a lot, or some people don't know. So I'm just going to cover it quickly. And then I'm going to talk about some characteristics of CI CD that's relevant to pen testing. And then um, I'm going to talk about the reasons of this project, which is uh, the challenges that I encountered trying to automate dynamic testing or dust in CI/CD environment. And then I'm going to introduce the approach that we we did, and then how we integrated with the Selenium test to make it even more awesome. So who I am? I'm a cloud application security architect, and so it's a mouthful, I know. And it means a, like, a lot of different things to different organizations. But I live in San Francisco, in Bay Area. I think generally, uh, architect, particularly in startups, it means you do everything, really. So I want to talk about the CICD. Um, um, so CI stands for continuous integration, which means uh, you commit your code multiple times a day into a centralized repo that you shared with your team. And then continuous delivery, that's uh, what CD stands for. That just means uh, every code should be releasable and that you can, you can deploy a code on a push of a button. And the pipeline means from the, uh, the automation of the entire process, process, starting from when developers uh, commit their code and then build tests and deployment. All of this is uh, automated, meaning everything is powered by code. There is no physical environment that you have to deal with anymore. So why does it matter? Um, so I wanted to just compare what what uh, um, software integration is before the CI and what uh, software delivery is before continuous uh, delivery. And so that way it will be clear why the existing tool, the pen testing tools are not suitable for the environment. So before continuous integration, when people, people, the engineers, they write their code on their own and they test in their own local environment. And then they integrate. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's a month. And then that big, that big bang happens and things will fail unavoidably. And so you might, you know, if you're all software engineers, you know how 
meet the deadline for delivery is hard, especially in the past. And I don't know how many of you are actually in CICD environment, but if you're not in this environment, it's pretty hard. And if you are, it's still hard, but slightly easier. So when continuous integration comes and engineers have controls of almost everything, you, they write code, they write the tests, and, and all the tests are automated and happening as they're writing the code, merging the code, and then the build happens right there after they merge the code automatically. And so it's, it's all together. By the time the code gets to integration stage, the test will happen automatically too. And if there is any issue, it gets the commit fails and they have to fix the issues, whatever that is. And then for software de delivery, before uh, the continuous delivery, and you have to have someone to do the test after integration, and you have to have a team to do the deployment, and obviously there are human interactions there to, get it, to make it happen. And with continuous delivery, and it's same thing when engineers commit their code, all the tests, all the uh, release tests, deployment tests, they all happen there. And so theoretically, when you have, when your code is done, it's committed and it's merged into the master branch. And sometimes it's even in local branch and your code is, everything is okay. It's ready to be deployed, supposedly. However, when it comes to implementation, there are shades of gray, obviously, and most of the time there is still some kind of human interaction for deployment. It really depends on the company. So this is something I found online from Instagram, uh, Instagram com, uh, so website. I don't work for Instagram. And that's just to illustrate how fast things are moving today. And they deploy their backend code 30 to 50 times a day. And oftentimes, most of the time, with no human interaction at all. And what they're saying is that their engineering moves fast. So. So that's one of the key keywords for CICD, fast. And then um, make it easier to find your bad commits and fix them. So that's another keyword too, and particularly in the sense of finding your security bugs. Well, I will come to it later. So um, I, I just touched the characteristics of CICD pipelines uh, in terms of uh, dust testing. Um, I haven't explained what Dust uh, is, and I assume most people here know, and if you don't know, can you raise your hand? Okay. So dynamic application security testing basically means you have to have a running app, and then you either manually or use a tool or both to point it to your running app and look for security vulnerabilities. So anyway, uh, the characteristics that's relevant to automate your dust is um, the build are repeatable and deterministic. And then also that everything is automated on um, all the release, all the um, testing, testing, different testing. And also they're really fast. So the reason that's relevant is because uh, when the build is, when the entire process is repeatable and deterministic, obviously, if you think about it, if you can automate your security testing here, then you have a repeatable and deterministic way to do that as well. So that's why it's relevant here. And then that's automate. That's, that means, uh, you know how oftentimes security teams uh, would chase after the engineering team and oftentimes would say, that's deployed, I don't know. Oh, that's what happens. No one told me. I mean, every one well of you said that. I'm, I guarantee you. If you if you didn't say that, you're not a security person. I've been in this field long enough. I know. So, so when so if you think about the uh, automation, then and it's deterministic. Then that means you can automate your security steps and do the same thing, which is a plus sign. And that to me, it's a good thing. And then also testing environment. In the past, you have to set up a environment specifically for testing. And you have to wait for people to tell you which one is going to be released and you're going to deploy into the testing environment and you're going to test. None of them is necessary anymore for CICD pipeline. 
And so challenges. If you look at the existing dust tools, oftentimes it needs some kind of human interactions. They want you to put a URL in there. They want you to put the credential in there. They want you to put parameters there, what to exclude, what to include, this and that. Right? It, it almost like, it seems like, is it even worse to automate that? Because some tools does offer API tools to let you automate that. But it's just like, this still involves a lot of human steps. And then also, um, this is relevant if you are running in a uh, containerized environment. You have to have a running app. And I will touch that later a little more. And also, oftentimes, with the existing DAST tools, you have to have a separate reporting system where someone else, where whoever is doing the test, have to log into the UI, find the um, vulnerabilities, and generally, you create a JIRA ticket or some some other system, whatever. Um, you know, if you wanted to make an engineer do that, you know what they're saying? Because I've been told that I have too many tools to run. I don't want to log into another tool. Yeah. So if you, if you think about all the CI, CD, and that state, and the state of, uh, of the DAST tool, you would be thinking about panicking. What do I do? Because it's a black box. Code gets into the pipeline, and production website comes out of that pipeline. So fear not. So what we can do is you unpack one of this CI CD pipeline, one of the um, process from beginning to end. So oftentimes, you would always have a SCM, be, let it be GitHub, GitLab, whatever you're using. And then you always have to have some kind of build testing. And in CI CD environment, it's automated. But most of the time, build testing are automated to some degree today anyway. And then you, you generally have some, some kind of integration test. And then in a very automated environment, the build test and integration tests are usually combined. And then you have production. So build server, what is the build server? It's nothing but a server that you can do anything in it, run anything in it. So Awesome, you can run any kind of security testing there too. And then, so that means you have two places, it depends on your environment, you may have one or two places that you can do security testing. And that's during build test or integration test. So um, with that knowledge and the knowledge of, uh, um, well with that knowledge, so I know my requirements for a DAST tool is that this tool needs to be completely automated. And no matter which environment I'm testing, I have to be able to integrate it easily. And then it should produce a report within the CI CD pipeline, so whichever tool that you're using. And then it should be relatively fast, because uh, fast is one of the correct, correct, uh, characteristics of CI CD pipelines. And it needs to be scalable. So before I get into the details of how we implemented it, I want to talk about uh, a little bit of uh, container images or containers, just in case that any one of you are not familiar with it. Container basically, think about the OS in the old time. Basically, every, you have everything in code of that OS. So it's lightweight, standalone, executable package of software that includes your code library and configurations, everything you need. So no matter where you have this container, you just start it and it will run it. So that's the idea. And then with container, um, oftentimes company will do orchestration, meaning manage the life cycle of the container. So you can think about that, I say, abstraction of network layer. So you know how you have to set up, you used to have to work with the DevOps engineers to set up the environment and the network interface, or how the servers talk to each other, how the servers can be accessed externally, internally, all of those can be taken care of, can be taken care of by orchestration layer. And that's code as well. So that's what I was trying to say. There is no physical uh, servers anymore. Everything's code. I know you, 
those of you who were here for the last presentation, and Jim talked about how he thinks uh, serverless uh, is the future, and then dockerization and, and orchestration is uh, it's going to die. Well, I don't know if it's going to die in the future. I know that's what's happening right now where I am. Um, I live in San Francisco, and in Bay Area, containerization is huge. So this is just some statistics I found on uh, Datadog. So this was, uh, this data was like March last year, and they were saying Docker runs on 20% of all the servers they monitor. And then uh, there was a 75% increase of using Docker. It's like March, the year prior to that. So you can imagine it's a lot more now. Actually, where I am, it feels like it's 100%. I mean, I'm my unbiased uh, stats, obviously. And also, uh, another thing to be noticed is when companies use orchestration, service goes up and down all the time. That's another challenge for dust testing, obviously. So, um, so now I know what we want from a dust tool in dust environment. I know where we can integrate it. And I start looking for tools. And um, I know I want a dockerized solution because uh, that's what works best for us. And, and then I know uh, there's a plus thing. I mean, it's a nice to have thing, which is integrated with Selenium test automation. And because uh, when you integrate with Selenium tests, then you test exactly what's released, no more, no less. And that's, uh, to me, that's a some, somewhat important in CICD pipelines because uh, with that the tool, oftentimes you have to crawl the entire website and you have to test more than what you need to. And obviously that slows down the tests. So, um, and then you want the resort to be available in, in the engineering CI, uh, CICD pipeline. To me, it's Jenkins UI. Um, and then uh, the tool should find meaningful vulnerabilities out of the box. So that leaves me with two choices, Zap and Burp. And so there's an existing dark image, and it's well-maintained with a uh, Zap, Zap image, and it's uh, well-maintained by OWASP. And but the findings are kind of limited. And so I looked into Burp, and there is uh, some kind of open source, the dark images, but usually it's only suitable for uh, interactive use. It's not for automation. And so what that make, makes me think that I can automate it with the headless, uh, headless extension anyway. And, and the important thing is uh, Burp out of uh, box produces a lot of meaningful findings. And to me, that is important. If I'm going to do something, if I'm going to spend my time, I want it to, to count, right? I don't want to just check another box, and that's not what I'm here for. Um, so Burp, I know you can integrate with the Selenium tests. And Zap, I looked for information. I didn't find any, so I'm not sure. And adding that, uh, I think the uh, findings wasn't sufficient, so I decided to go with Burp. So um, here's, uh, I guess uh, it's unfortunate for now. Um, I got this uh, acceptance for the talk like two, three weeks ago. I didn't have enough time to work with my organization to open source it, but we're working on it. I work in a uh, highly regulated environment. We have, um, we have HIPAA data. It's uh, very restrictive, so I have to go through a lot of hoops to get it open sourced, but I'm getting there. So with that being said, I can talk to you on uh, what I did, but I won't be able to show you the source code. Not today. So um, headless burp extension, um, if you haven't used it, it's a command line interface uh, that you can use with uh, burp suite. And then it's usually used for automation. And one of the, another, uh, some of the good things that when you actually uh, integrate with the Selenium tests is uh, um, beyond that you test exactly what you release, no more or less, and you can pass the URL and you can pass the TLS cert, well, and credentials. Um, 
pass. I mean, you don't have to do anything. Basically, Selenium is a headless browser, and it just crawls your website, and the QAs have to do that anyway. So they have that part set up, and you set up Burp to listen to the Selenium traffic, and it's a passive listen. It captures all the credentials, the URLs, and, and then the search is set up from QA side. You don't have to worry about anything. And imagine if you were going to um, actually deal with any other DAS tool. Those are the things you have to do manually. So integration with Selenium helps tremendously when it comes to automation. And then uh, with the headless verb, it also produces JUnit and HTML reports. And also, I might integrate that with Jenkins UI. And also, the headless burp has a feature that you can tune the false positive of, and that will just produce actionable findings. So the steps of uh, Dockerized headless burp is this that's what I did. And there are about like four or five different open source the burp, um, burp doc images on GitHub. You can find them. But this particular one, I found it the most useful. If you follow this guy's interaction, you will get to the UI phase. And then after you have the Docker image uh, created locally, then you have to build the proxy and the scanner, the burpless, uh, the headless burp proxy and scanner, and then copy that into the Docker image you have. Sounds straightforward enough, right? Um, there are a lot of bumps, sweet bumps that I had to go through, and I'm sharing it with you guys. Hopefully, you don't have to do it. Actually, if you knew exactly what I'm talking about here, your speed of dockerizing headless Burberry is going to be a lot shorter than mine. And so basically, the only way to active Burp license is through the UI. There is no other way. And then use Docker volume option to persist your data, whatever you need to persist. And then uh, this reference is actually um, from Burp Suite. It's, uh, it's on their support page, and they will tell you, they will help you to dockerize uh, their burp. And so if you have questions, I suggest you to go there, check it out there, and you'll find some valuable information. And then um, you have to build the headless proxy and scanner because uh, the app in the burp B app does not work. It didn't work with me. I don't know why. And so I built it myself, and it worked. So another thing is, if you want your burp to work with Selenium, you have to set the listening mode to all interface because you have to listen externally in versus internal. And then, yeah, I can't stress enough. And so I followed this guy's instruction, and then I forgot to restart my computer, and then it didn't work. And I stuck there. I was like, what's going on? And I had to post the issue on his uh, GitHub repo. And it turns out I just need to restart my computer. I just read the uh, instructions more carefully. Problem solved. So any questions about this? I think I'm using one seven seventeen or seventeen seven, something like that. <laughs> yeah, the newest way I tested it didn't work with uh, the headless proxy and scanner, unfortunately. Uh, this is kind of a boring question, so I apologize, guys. Um, how does the licensing model for Burp work for if you're spinning out multiple Docker containers? Yeah, I think that's a question you should talk to Port Swigger. <laughs> uh, <Good answer>. Yeah, <laughs> I I practiced like a hundred times. <laughs> so, so yeah, so the Docker license is different than the Burp Suite Pro license. You need a separate license for Docker version, or no? I checked the online. I don't think they have that model right now. So if I have a Burp Suite Pro license, I can get the Docker. <laughs> I'll check. Yeah. <laughs> I'll check. yeah. So yeah, license question you should all talk to yeah. the company because I have no idea how they do it. Um, the reason I don't know either yet, I, I'm going to talk about it in a bit. <clears throat> 
So once you have a Docker, and if you work in a company, you're doing this project for your company, this is the time you hand the Docker repo to your DevOps guy and then tell them what you want and the magic will happen. So basically that's what happened to me. And so uh, what happened is I checked in the Docker image and it immediately tricked a build in our build server and then the, the image got pushed to our to the image uh, image registry and and then uh, and then the rest I POC'd it out and worked with uh, a QA team and we tested it out with Selenium and everything worked out like much better than I thought and uh, I, I I can't complain really I I thought it was um, better than I ever asked. So um, unfortunately, like I said, I'm here on my personal capacity. I couldn't show you live demo. I, I, there's no way I'm going to show live demo in DevCon anyway. <laughs> uh, so, but I recorded a, I recorded my screens to, to go through the entire process in this image to just give you an idea of what happened and what the end result is. <clears throat> So before I move on to that uh, demo, I just want to talk about it. So we actually integrated with the integration tests. And so we haven't done for like all the engineers when they run their tests, we haven't done there yet. Because right now we have other issues to solve before we can move there. So um, that's another reason I didn't know. So um, OK, I'm going to do the demo. Oh, I guess it's going to go through very fast. I can't pause it, it looks like. So this is, a, I'm showing you, I'm just uh, trying to show that I might, might change it to the Git repo. And it's going to show up and will trigger a, test, uh, a CI CD, uh, will trigger a build in the CI server. So I made changes in the readme file, and then I had to commit it. So now the code is committed. Git push made it happen. So I'm going to refresh the page. And this wasn't there. The DEF CON demo online wasn't there. And now it's there. So commit was successful. And then I go to our um, CI server. So those are the steps that's happened. I wish I could pause it. Um, maybe I could, yeah. So those are the steps that happened after um, the build was triggered. So. Um, I think this is okay to talk about it. We actually use uh, Circle CI. And in Circle CI, they spin up a doc image, they set up the environment, they do whatever task you ask it to do. So in this case, build a Docker image in their Docker image. And then uh, it pushed the image to our image registry. So th this is where the integration happens in our environment. We're still trying to move it to, into one environment. But uh, suffice it to say, once it gets uh, into integration environment, uh, it triggered a burp proxy. It started it up. All of this is automated. No one did and I mean, no humans is uh, doing anything behind. Go ahead. Usually you have. Usually you committed to your own branch. I mean, it depends on how your organization is set up. But 
unless you're doing it yourself, I would imagine you have to have your own branch. So I had my own branch, and it got pushed to the master because that, it, yeah. It, exactly. Everything's done, and I'm finished the working on this project. I wouldn't say, I'm, I'm sure there will be maintenance, but right now it's, it's like it, pretty much done. So that's why it was committed to master. So this test took 23 minutes. Um, it's relatively long, but I also had a test that took about five minutes. So this is another thing to be considered when you want to do integration, how long it takes to, to actually do the test for your environment. If it's too long, you probably won't be able to integrate with uh, uh, the uh, development pipeline. <coughs> so that's what happened uh, in Jenkins. Um, all the reports was generated, and then they they were um, they were actually posted into Jenkins, and then there is a Slack message sent to me, so I know that uh, a report is done because uh, um, because it is still kind of early for me. I'm still manually tuning the tool, so that way I can feel comfortable to hand it to everyone. Just say, hey, hey, go ahead and take it, and your everything's okay. There's very few false positive because with all the security testing tool, I mean, I'm sure you all know. It always has the false positive, and then a lot of things is environmental. We have to tune them off. Go ahead. Two questions. One is, have you integrated the, the re report back out to where you can actually shut down the, or stop the build from going? If you get like a critical or error that uh, you know it didn't pass, have you done that yet? That's in the plan. We haven't done it yet. Okay. Because, like I said, I don't feel 100% comfortable that I can just fail build yet because I'm, I haven't finished tuning the reports yet, I like get false positive. And then the second thing is, your, your website that you're going through, do you happen to be using your SAPI or what are you using to test in the verb suite, is it? Good question, so right now it's an integration test, it's to the UI. Um, what we, it's actually powered by the Selenium tests, yeah. So I have thought about the uh, UI. I thought about I can probably integrate it with a REST API tool. That's my next step. Good. Maybe it's a basic question, but uh, how did the report from Verb one to Jenkins? Oh, and so you see that the step here, publish HTML report. So um, once the scans is down, it produces a report. So when the report is produced and in Jenkins, you can actually post the using code to post it into the UI. Huh? Using a webhook or something? Um, actually, it's not webhook. Um, we use, a, I don't know if I can talk about our environment. Yeah, but we, ha we use a specific kind of uh, uh, way to post the things uh, in Jenkins, but it's code, it's not webhook. It, you, yeah. It's custom. It's not that customer. Yeah, you can find sample yeah, code. Yeah, so I think that part, I should be able to open source it once I go through all the hook. And I will post the uh, sample code online. You should be able to see it, and you can just use it. So theoretically, you could go all the way back to GitHub and then into the IDE of the developer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the idea. Right. right. Yeah. What sort of uh, security testing are you doing with this one? So, with Selenium, you know, it's a QA tool. It does all the function tests for the particular feature you're going to release. Yeah. And Burp is just out of box. I didn't do anything special. I haven't started tuning it yet. But I'm curious to see what I can find once I start tuning it. Yeah. So theoretically, you could replace Burp with a commercially available headless dynamic scanner. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like plug and play. Yeah, that's what I think. I hope the commercial tours, if there are any representatives here, they, they, they're listening. Right, that's yeah, because so I don't have to do this. I can spend my time doing other things. I was wondering, are you getting pushback from the developers? Because I'm getting pushback from the developers saying anything over a few minutes, uh, and they're concerned about because they want to do this integration multiple times. And if you start putting this in uh, sequential, eventually we're going to have multiple security tools running this. 
we've got to parallelize all of this and potentially run this on multiple build servers. Yeah, so so I can see that. Um, so I did it in integration phase. So it's uh, a little bit later already. And usually QA, that's QA's group, and usually their tests take an hour or two anyway. So they don't mind. But I know what you're saying. So what I was thinking is uh, to make it happen within the dev environment, um, I might try. I might, I might try out Zap. That's all what I was thinking for what I'm gonna do next. I like, uh, remember the uh, engineers develop the code and then the tricks are built, and it goes through all kinds of tests. Sometimes coverage and quality tests, all of those. You can add Zap there. That's my next step. Yeah, uh, if the test, so if uh, the code is the same, the findings are the same. No difference at all. It's a, it works pretty well. Oh. Yeah, so that's the part of where I said it works pretty amazingly when you use the Selenium. Uh, initially, I thought I have to set up a burp, but it turns out none of this is necessary because the Selenium has to handle the credential itself. And once it logs in, the tokens get carried out in the subsequent requests. So there you have it. You don't have to deal with the credentials. Yes. Oh, all right, no problem. So that's the report out of the box. That's the findings I have. I would say it's pretty good. And for how cheap Burp Suite is, I really can't complain. So, yeah, and that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Um, any any other questions? Um, for findings persistence, uh, do you have a plan on addressing false positive persistence? Uh, if you've got it, sorry. Yeah, so with uh, headless burp, that's the part where I was hoping that their dust representatives here that they can come up with a commercial tool. You have, there's a uh, configuration file. You can add specific findings there as a filter, but you have to do it manually. You can do it, but it's kind of, uh, there's a lot of work. Is that based on the finding type, or is it based on the specific URL in the finding type combined? That's finding type, okay. yeah, unfortunately. So in this example, even though you've only made like maybe five changes, with Burp, you're still testing the entire build, correct? Right, yeah, yeah. Is, have you given any consideration to figuring out a way just to test what's changed to make it even faster? You mean, when you say test, do you mean in the CI server? Well, when you run the Burp task kind of thing, oh. can you configure Burp so say it knows from a manifest or something? Where those five changes ended up in the code. So, so I, okay, so I, I know where the confusion comes from. So the uh, committing part and then trigger test in CI and commit the, uh, and then push the image to image registry, that's for burp. The tests is not for burp. I use, the, I put the image down. So if I show you this diagram. Yeah. So, what I did is I commit the code that triggered this entire process, and then the image got pushed here. And this part doesn't have anything to do with how I create the burper image anymore. Right, right, right. It just looks at the image, right? Yeah, I just put the image. It doesn't know how the image was built. It just knows the image. What do you mean when you say it doesn't know how? So, like, if you have, like, a giant mm -hmm. right, you can have all kinds of rules, and, mm -hmm. you know, manifest, and YAML. Mm -hmm. But when you're testing on the DAS side, does it know anything about that? Yeah, it, well, so, 
in this step, update uh, deployment, if you're using some kind of orchestra orchestration, orchestration, yeah, the orchestration actually sends a request to your environment. So if you're in a Kubernetes environment, Kubernetes receives the request and it updates uh, your environment by pulling the newest image to here. So if you make changes and you, you, there another environment that's using the image, it will get updated. But you, we don't have to worry about it because all those are set up via the orchestration. Right. So you'll have the previous image and the new image. So you can yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, the infrastructure team, in, infrastructure code takes care of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say? So the image only if there are changes to Burp Suite image that I made, it will the information will get updated via the up, uh, update deployment part. Like uh, the orchestration part takes care of that to pull the new image and know when to pull a new image. It only pulls the new image if there are changes. If there's no changes, obviously it doesn't pull new images. Yes, but um, uh, so well, my username is Pink Gladiator on GitHub. Actually, none of us. Once it's set up, it's none of us does anything. So Selenium sends all the requests to the web website you're testing, and Burp proxy passively listens and records all the traffic, and then take the information, the data that uh, it recorded from Burp proxy, and then uh, and then I once that's done, once Selenium test is done, I kill um, burp proxy, start up a burp scanner to scan the information I just collected from Selenium. So there are three types of tests you could do with this. You could test the app inside the container. You could test whether you can break out of the container or whether you can achieve root ownership of the container. Which of those three did you test? Um, this is to test the application outside of the container. So they basically, it's uh, nothing fancy. I didn't try to, to. You're saying if I tried to escalate the privilege to get the root privilege? Yeah, none of those. Yeah. Or affect uh, you know only the underlying hardware or affect other processes. Break out of the box, we have hack one for that. We have. Yeah, yeah. We might be talking to you. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Okay, we do sure. That too. We yeah, those things are you can't find them via this kind of automated testing. Yeah, it's a lot more complicated. Yeah, 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 and, yeah that needs human involvement. That's why we always have jobs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's uh, that's it. My time's up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.